The Casio Exilim EXS1 is an incredible digicam from 2002. Its tiny size makes it the perfect travel companion. I took mine to Japan with me on a recent trip and the images have a wonderful retro feel to them, almost like I jumped in a time machine and took them 20 years ago. In this video, I'll show you 20 images from that Japan trip, but first here is a quick recap about the camera. Now remember, if you want the full specs and full info about the EXS1, check out my earlier video here on Matt Loves Cameras YouTube. So the Casio Exilim EXS1 is tiny. It's about as big as a credit card, but it's a little bit thicker. The camera has a 1.3 megapixel CCD sensor and the sensor inside this camera is tiny. It measures about one fifth of an inch by one eighth of an inch, which is just over five millimeters by four millimeters. That goes some way to explain the picture quality. If you're looking for sharp photos like you take with your iPhone, this is not the camera for you. The camera has a nice little TFT screen on the back, which is fantastic because the viewfinder of the camera is absolutely useless. The camera takes two different kinds of memory cards, not at the same time, obviously. It takes MMC cards and it takes SD cards. I've been using SD cards with mine, but there is a kicker. You can only use SD cards with a capacity up to two gigabytes. So if you put a card bigger than two gigabytes in this camera, it won't work. Now, although I told you about this in my first video on this channel, there was a bit of an issue in Japan. So keep watching all the way to the end and I'll tell you what happened. On the camera on the front here on the sticker, it says it's an ultra thin wearable card camera. I don't really know how you'd wear this though. What would you do? Would you like gaffer tape it to your body? No idea, but it is tiny and very, very cool. The camera has a fixed lens around the 37 millimeter focal length in full frame terms. It also has a minimum focus distance of around one meter, which is just over three feet. And I found that out in my first video when I took a whole load of images close up and they all came out blurred. So make sure, you know, you get a bit of distance between you and your subject when you use this camera. Now, one last thing before I show you the images, the photos straight out of camera look a little bit flat and a little bit dull. So I explained in my first video how I sort of edit them in Lightroom and these images you're about to see are no different. I sort of add some contrast and I add some vibrance to the images. It makes them pop a little bit more and sort of the shapes of the subjects in the images are sort of more defined and they look a lot better. So that's just one tip I would give you with this camera. Of course, you don't have to edit the images if you like them straight out of camera. It really is up to you. Okay, so the first image here is some kind of food stand with a cool little character there. I have no idea where this was. I think it was somewhere in Tokyo in a shopping center, but I didn't really make notes about the exact location. But I just love the sort of lights here and all the sort of colored candy and sweets. I think it looks fantastic. And that character in the, there in the middle looks really cool. The second one is some kind of blossom tree. I don't think it's a cherry blossom tree, or if it is, it's maybe a different variant to the classic cherry blossom. I really don't know. My knowledge of flora and fauna is not very good. But as you can see here, this is just like a mass of white pinky sort of flowers. I think it looks wonderful. It looks kind of like a painting. It looks all painterly. Um, I think it looks really cool. I really like this photo. The next one is in an amusement arcade. I tried to take some images of, you know, all the, the vending machines and the claw machines. Oh my gosh, we spent so much money in those claw machines. I think we spent around 80 US dollars in the claw machines, my son and I trying to win a prize. We won nothing, we won nothing at all. My daughter came along and she put 100 yen in the machine and she won a prize straight away. She's very lucky, what can I say? So this is in the, uh, one of the arcades here. A lot of the images in the arcades, they wanted, they wanted to use the flash this camera and I, I took a couple of pictures that didn't turn out very good. People started looking at me, but I did manage to take this photo here of someone putting some prizes on top of the shelf in, in an amusement arcade. And yeah, it looks okay. Moving on to the next one, we have some more sort of blossoms here in a tree in Tokyo. I used to love going out every morning and walking around the, the suburbs of Nihonbashi in Tokyo and just taking photos of ordinary Tokyo life. And here is a lovely image of some more blossoms and that nice blue sky there and the green leaves. The next one is a little park on my walk in Nihonbashi. And there was this lady, I actually watched her for about 10 minutes. And she was an older lady. She was probably, I don't know, I reckon she was in her 80s. And she was just going around tending to the garden in this public park. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. And, uh, you know, I was sending her, you know, good vibes, good karma. I thought she was doing a fantastic job. And so here is the beautiful, peaceful park. The next image is looking down from the balcony of our apart hotel. So we stayed in this like hotel, which is like an apartment hotel in a big building. And from the fifth floor, we looked downwards 
And this was the scene, these beautiful cars. I think it was some kind of rental car place. And I really love the colors of all the cars here. Every day there was different colors here. They're all parked differently. So every day I sort of took images. One of them, my favorite ones, I actually took with my Minolta TC1 on Adox Color Mission Film. And certainly if you wanna see more images from my trip to Japan, make sure you check out my other videos. I've released four already about Japan on film, shooting Japan with 35 millimeter film. So check them out out here on YouTube. Just around the corner from where we were staying, there was this kind of service station, petrol station. And yeah, it was very hands-on. Like a lot of petrol stations in Australia, you know, you just fill up yourself, you go inside the place to pay and that's about it. But the people working at this station, the guys working at this station, very hard working. They're out there all the time, directing people, helping people, washing cars, doing all sorts of stuff. So I took this photo and I really liked that one. The guy in action there, just, you know, sort of wiping the windscreen there, very cool. Here are some flowers that I took around the neighborhood. I really only took this one because of the vibrant colors, the beautiful greens, pale pinks, and the bright pinks there. You know, you do get some really bright colors, really good colors out of this camera. Like I said, you do have to tweak them a little, but I think, you know, the end result looks pretty good and makes really makes those colors pop. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I would love you to subscribe to my channel. Also make sure you check out my free photography newsletter, mattlovescameras.substack.com. It's all about photography, so both digital and film. This is down in the metro station or the subway station in Tokyo. And yeah, this was near the place we were staying. And there were these four ladies, like four business ladies, all in sort of identical black suits. And they had their masks on and they're all having a chat and having a wonderful time. And of course, what does Matt Love's cameras do? Matt Love's cameras take some photos of them. Um, but they didn't really even notice I was doing it, but it was just wonderful. I thought they were having a great old time having a chat on the platform there. And of course, like a lot of these photos, a lot of these photos, you know, they could be taken any time in the last 20 or so years. And that's the beauty of this camera. You know, they do have a very distinctive sort of retro feel to them. I absolutely love them. The next image is the train barreling down the line there. And yeah, I really like this. There's a bit of movement in this one. It's got a bit of a yellow cast, that one, probably because of the lighting, but still think it's pretty cool. The next image is probably my favorite image of all in this series. We went to Ueno Park in Tokyo, my wife and I. The kids stayed back in the apartment. They were knackered after like 12 days in Japan by this stage. They were completely <laughs> tired. So they had a day in the apartment. My daughter wasn't feeling well, to be fair. My wife and I had a little date in the afternoon. We went out to Ueno Park. And here is the beautiful water. There's some nice blossoms. The cherry blossoms had kind of finished their season in Tokyo by the time we got there. But there were some blossoms by the lake here. And you can sort of see a temple and some buildings in the background. I really love that one. So you can see with this image, the contrast and the saturation really gives the water a nice sort of reflective look and the, the flowers look fantastic and the reeds there, the yellow reeds, sort of really pop in this image. If you look at the next one though, I've kind of made it a little bit more neutral, you know, the colors and stuff. This is a bit more like it was out of camera. So the look of these images out of the EXS one is completely up to you. I personally like a more contrasty, a more saturated look, a bit like I'm shooting, you know, Color Plus 200 film or Ektar film or something like that. But like I said, the look of these images is really down to you. Next image is looking up at some more flowers in the trees here. I really like this, the shapes and stuff of the branches and the leaves look fantastic. The next photo is of the motorway. So this was also taken from our apartment hotel. We had a stunning view of a motorway. What can I say? I book all the best accommodation. But again, like to me, this sort of feeds into the retro feel of the camera. The motorway is kind of dated and old and this kind of feeds into that. So you don't really know, you know, this could be an image from 2002. Now, right near the motorway, there was a big building called TCAT. It was the Tokyo City Air Terminal. Sounds like an airport, it's not. It's just like a bus station, basically, where buses and taxis go to and from Narita Airport and also Haneda Airport. So in TCAT, there was like an overpass, and I went up to the overpass, and I took this image looking down at the traffic one day. I really love this. I love the reflection of the lights of the van there in the road, and you know, the arrows there look fantastic. I really like the lines. There's a few people there, just give it some scale as well. So yeah, that's one of my other favorite images in this set. The next few images I took on a walk with the missus one day. Yes, we had another more early morning date in Tokyo. We walked around Nihonbashi while the kids slept in. That's the beauty of having older children. You can just leave them in the hotel and they can sleep and you can get out there and do things like take photos. The first image here is a beautiful kind of salmon pink kind of building, sort of an older building with some nice sort of green doors. I really love that image. 
The next one is a cute little building here with some nice greenery, some nice pot plants and some nice little ferns and a, a yellow sort of awning. Really like that one. The next one is one of the bridges we walked over. There are so many bridges in Tokyo, it's unbelievable. So this was a little bridge we walked over here. I really like that, the sort of the colors and the geometric shapes in that one are really cool. And the last image is of another different bridge that we walked over and that is taken from the first bridge. Now, if you'd like to see more images of Tokyo's Nihonbashi district, make sure you check out this other video here on Matt Love's Cameras YouTube. It's called Tokyo Film Photography Walk with the Minolta TC1 and Fujifilm Superior 400. So you see about 20 minutes of footage of me walking around Tokyo one very chilly Sunday morning. I think it was like Easter Sunday and it was pretty chilly for me being a Queenslander. I mostly took the images on that photo walk with the Minolta TC1, a wonderful point and shoot 35 millimeter camera. But there's also images in the video from the Contax T3, the Fujifilm, Black Natura F1.9, and also one of my favorite digital cameras, the Ricoh GR3. So make sure you check that out. Now, when I was describing the images I took with this camera, did you notice that they were all taken in Tokyo? Now, we spent 18 days in Japan. We started off in Sapporo on the beautiful island of Hokkaido. Then we went down to Kyoto, Osaka area. And then finally, we headed to Tokyo for five days at the end. Now, what happened was this. Although I knew that I needed a two gigabyte or less memory card for this camera, I didn't take one to Japan with me. I made sure I had the charger, I made sure I had the camera. For some reason, I got mixed up with my memory cards and I left the small capacity two gigabyte one at home. So I literally could not shoot with this camera in Japan. I mean, the camera has an internal memory, but I think the internal memory is like four or five images, which is kind of not very many, is it? So I was kind of stuck. I had this camera with me. I couldn't take any photos. I was absolutely really annoyed with myself that I'd done this. I went to lots of different electronic stores like Bit Camera, Yodabashi. No one has any two gigabyte cards for sale in Japan anymore, just like here in Australia. You go to a store, probably the smallest card you're gonna find these days is probably like 16 gigabyte. And a lot of the cards are 32, 64, 128, 256. However, one day when I had a little bit of time to myself, I went out early one morning in Kyoto while the family was sleeping and I went to a camera store. Now this was mostly a film camera store. They sold secondhand film bodies and point and shoots and stuff like that. I got really excited when I got there because they had a beautiful Ricoh GR21, that amazing super wide angle camera. And they also had a uh, Fujifilm Natura Classica. Again, it was tiny, beautiful point and shoot with a zoom lens. They both looked amazing. I went up to the gentleman with my Google Translate and I said, can I have a look at those cameras, please? And he basically wrote back to me, that's the broken shelf. So these amazing cameras that looked incredible, uh, they were broken, hence the cheap prices. I continued to look around the store and lo and behold, in one of the cabinets, there was a two gigabyte memory card, an SD card. Perfect, this is perfect for my Casio Exalim EXS1. So I sort of, again, Google Translate, asked the man if I could buy the card. He kind of looked at me like, are you crazy? Like a, he said to me, it's a, it's a two gigabyte card. And I went, yeah, yeah, it's a two gigabyte card. And then I sort of mumbled something in English about um, uh, you have a digicam, but I, I don't think he understood. But there you go, I finally tracked down a two gigabyte card in Kyoto. So unfortunately, I only have like the last five days of my travels captured with the Casio Exalim EXS1. What did you think of the photos? Please let me know in the comments below. Now I'm actually heading back to Japan. I love Japan so much. I'm actually heading back for a kind of a, a photography trip to sort of take photos, ride the trains, eat Japanese food, drink Japanese beer, all that kind of stuff in November. And there should be the, the fall colors, the, the autumn leaves should be out during that time. Probably not quite the peak, but they should be out. So let me know, do you think I should take the Casio Exalim EXS1 with me back to Japan in November? Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments. Since my first video review of the EXS1, I've actually been online and I actually found an EXM1. That is the version with an MP3 player. So would you like to see a review of that camera as well? Or is it just too similar to this one? Let me know everything in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.